If you're hearing this video, chances are you're just like me, heartbroken by the death of Hanakimura. And while there is much to be said about the circumstances that led to her death, there are many articles and videos that touch this subject that I would like to avoid those if I could. Instead, I would like to focus on one of the positive sides of her life, which was her career. Therefore, I would like to welcome you into this journey. The journey into Hanus Kimura's life into wrestling. The titles, the matches, the stories, and the journey of one of the most dangerous flowers in Joshi. But in order to better understand Hanakimura, we need to go back to her origins and start from her mother, Kyoko Kimura, who was not only a professional wrestler, but also her biggest inspiration. <laughs> Tan skin, giant afro, Jamaican collars and broad shoulders. Add all of these four factors and the name that pops up is Kyoko Kimura. She started in 2003 in GWP, Joshi Puruhesu. This was one of the featured Joshi promotions during the 90s. Despite never getting to the popularity of an All Japan Women's, GWP would get good attendances during the first half of the 90s, and even managed to secure a good TV deal that helped grow its popularity. That popularity would eventually fall in 1997, when a mix of tragedy and injuries would shatter the reputation of GWP. They never rose to the mainstream popularity again, and eventually the promotion closed doors in 2017. However, let's go back to 2003 when Kyoko starts her career mostly in GWP. In the early years, she managed to expand to other promotions like Neo, Battle Arts, among many others, and in 2006, she starts getting booked in Big Japan for death matches. This would become a factor that eventually defined her career. In 2012, she starts getting regular with stardom. 
One of the first highlights comes in the end of September when she loses to Yuzuki Aikawa in the finals of the very first Five Star Grand Prix. This is Stardom's biggest singles tournament, and later that year, Aikawa would wrestle in the main event of the Year End Climax, another featured show, while Kyoko Kimura defeats Yoshirai lower in the same card. She keeps working regular shows up until August of 2016 when she produces a very special show. Hana Kimura Memorial, or Hana for shortens, was the show that Kyoko produced for Hana, who had debuted a few months back and would headline this main event in one of the only two matches featured between the two of them. And after Kyoko secures the victory with an armbar, she announces the end of her career for January 22nd of next year. Along the way, she wins three titles, the GWP Tag Team Championships, the Artists of Stardom alongside Hana and Kagetsu, and the GWP Openweight Championship against Ariza Nakajima. She finally retires in the show named Last Afro in a main event where she tags with her husband and Hana against the trio of Aja Kong, Meiko Satomura and Minoru Suzuki. After losing with a direct pin of Satomura, Kyoko would wrestle one last match against her daughter, refereed by her husband. And at the 4 minute mark, a big boot from Hana ends Kyoko's wrestling journey, passing the torch to Hana, whose own journey was about to begin. As you may imagine, Hannah grew very close to the sport of pro wrestling. In a little piece of trivia, at August 8, 2006, during a Neo show, an 8-year-old Hannah pins Tammy Mouse to become the new DDT Iron Man Heavy Metal Weight Champion. She loses the title immediately after to her mother, but it's fun to see a debut before a debut and a championship win before, well, more championship wins. In December of 2015, she is accepted into the Wrestle One Dojo, where she's trained by Hiroshi Yamato and Kai. And in just three months, shortly after she reaches the age of 19, Hana debuts against her dojo colleague Reika Saiki in a Wrestle One show. During the first seven months, Hana shifts bookings between Wrestle One, GWP, and Oz Academy. This last one would frequently put her to test against some of the most predominant figures in the Joshi scene. Take, for example, her first match there. They put her against the legendary Aja Kong. <laughs> Next month, she teams with her mother farming double Kimura and gets tested once again against Meiko Satomura and her student Mika Iwata. And in September, they face the already established team of Ikaru Shida and Siuri, and although they lose the match once again, fans seem to be getting behind Hana Kimura. Now, in GWP, she gets a breaking debut by, once again, teaming up with Kyoko and defeating Kaori Yoneyama and Yako Fujigasaki. This gets them a shot at the tech belts one week later against the champions Ariza Nakajima and Tsukasa Fujimoto. Her first taste of gold comes at September 18th, where she enters the tournament for the vacated GWP Junior and Princess of Pro Wrestling Championships and defeats Yako Fujigasaki in the finals, becoming the new champion with just three months in her career. And although these are titles created for less experienced wrestlers, it was particularly important in Hana's journey since she retained it over three defenses until losing it back to Yako Fujigasaki in a Korakanol TV show. But let's get back to September 18th. 
four days later in a big stardom show, the vile group of the Oedotai has a match against the trio of Jungle Kiona, Momo Atanabe and Mayu Iwatani. However, on the corner of the Oedotai there is only two familiar faces, Kagetsu and Kyoko Kimura. The third member was announced to be a surprise only to be revealed in the beginning of the match. And in a shocking revelation, the Stardom fans get to know the new Oedotai member, Hana Kimura, with a total makeover in her visuals and her attitude. The Oedotai attack the baby faces even before the bell rings and completely dominate the match, with Kyoko getting a quick pin on Jungle Kiona after a double team with Hana. After the match, the group sends a direct challenge to Mayu Iwatani, who at this time was one of the artists of Stardom Champions, that is the trio's title of the company. And with a decisive win and new bloods in their ranks, the Oedotai traces the roots to the main event of the next show, where they defeat the ace team of the company in Mayu Iwatani, Yoshirai and Kari Hojo, today known as Kari Sain. And yes, this means Hanakimura becomes a new champion in stardom with just two matches in the promotion. Their first defense comes in October in Korakono. Jungle Kiona and Momo Watanabe team up with Hiromu Mimura and seek revenge for the beating they took from the last match. And after a well-fought battle, where both the rookies are isolated, Hanakimura shows her stripes by hitting Mimura with a missile dropkick and securing her first pinfall in stardom. Sadly, due to an injury in early January, she's replaced by Viper in the show where the Oedotai lose their belts back to Azuki, Yoshirai and Momo Watanabe. By this point, it's fairly obvious to say that she had the it factor with her attractiveness, her exotic look and her immense natural charisma and has secured regular bookings in many of the Tokyo-based promotions and while she was getting more comfortable by doing her role as a despicable heel with the Oedotai, Hana would simultaneously build a fan base as a babyface in the other promotions she was working like the GWP, Wrestle One, Oz Factory or Sendai in which she was one of the fastest rising babyfaces in their respective low to mid cards. And after defeating her mother in her last show, Hana gets more space to flourish and continue to pile up victories with the Oedotai, while at the same time growing her own place in the very ranks of the group. And when in April, the trio's titles are once again vacated due to an injury of Momo Watanabe, the opportunity shines for Hana to recapture the belts that she never lost. They defeat the trio of Hiromi Mimura, Kariyojo and Konami with a direct pin from Hana on Kairi, but later lose in the finals against the former champions Queen's Quest with Hazuki replacing Watanabe. However, the direct pin over the Wonder of Stardom champion got Hana her first main event in singles matches and also her first title shot for the biggest belt in Stardom. Kairi Hojo and Hana Kimura headlined the final nights of the Grow Up Stars 2017 tour in a 20 minutes match that, although it revealed the technical flaws of the rookie, it also showed that the main event was probably a good place for her. In June, with Kagetsu, she wins the Goddess of Stardom Champion, which is Stardom's regular two-person tag team championships. In the following months, she would face Mayu Iwatani many times, and by doing so, she would establish the foundation of one of her biggest rivalries and it would be to the combination of Iwatani and Saki Kashima that they would lose the tag belts after an impressive title reign of 347 days and 8 defenses. On international adventures, Hana has her first experience outside of Japan when she travels to Spain in a double show for RCW Revolution Championship Wrestling. They even book her again next year for another double show during the Japan weekend. Her US debut comes at March 2018, where she performs in a Ring of Honor Dark Match part of the tournament to crown the first Ring of Honor Women's Champion. In September, she does a single date in England for Pro Wrestling Eve. This would also be the only time that Hannah wrestled in the United Kingdom. However, the biggest shock comes during the Mexican dates, where she develops a strong bound with Mary Apache and has, once again, complete change of her attitude and looks. Unlike the red and black suit and cult personality that represented the Yoedotai, Hannah starts experimenting with braids, brighter colors 
and joyfully fun clothing in what appeared to be a more futuristic look. These changes would also dictate how later she saw things in Japan. And this takes us to the finals of the 2018 Five Star Grand Prix. Kagetsu has 9 points and she's wrestling against Tam Nakano. This is the last match before the finals and the only two wrestlers on her block that have more points are Rachel Elring with 9 and Utami with 10. However, both of them already wrestled, so this means that if Kagetsu wins this match, she surpasses the other two and goes directly to the finals against Mayu Iwatani who already won the A block. The swerve comes when Hanakimura surprises everyone and attacks her partner making her lose the match and the tournament. According to the storyline, Hana believed that her time in Mexico changed her and when she came back she saw how weak and frail the Oedotai were and part of that was the lack of direction and determination from Kagetsu. This puts her in the spot for a one-on-one -on -one no DQ match against her former mentor. In Kagetsu's corner, there's the rest of the Oedotai and in Hana's, there's only one person, her new friend, Mary Apache. This was an extremely physical match and to this day one of Hana's biggest highlights. They took this brawl all over Karakanol and eventually Kagetsu ends up winning by referee decision. Once again, Hana lost but she remains very strong in the eyes of the fans. Now outside of the Oedotai, Hana is trying not only a new character but also a new wrestling style. She would be slower, more aggressive and often resorted to no-selling the opponent's moves during the matches. This, besides making those same matches boring and lacking the action that was characteristic of Stardom's wrestling, ended up driving away the fans that were curious about Hana's direction after leaving the Oedotai. This disapproval from the fans would also be felt in the booking, where she spends the rest of 2018 and early 2019 tagging up with random gaijin wrestlers who didn't share any particular connection with Hana. Outside of Stardom, however, the case was very different. Alongside Asuka, they formed a flourish team in promotions like Wave and Wrestle One, and this last one was, until that time, the only promotion she had a signed contract with. This would change on March 25th of 2019 when, in a press conference with Kazayashi of Wrestle One and Rossi Ogawa, the president of Stardom announces a full transfer to Stardom, and from that point, she would become a full time contracted wrestler. <laughs> The 2019 draft meant a big change in the direction of Hana's career. After choosing her team, she's joined by Jungle Kiona, Konami and Rebel Kel when introducing her new stable Tokyo Cyber Squad or TCS. The team of the group focused on inclusion, in the idea that we are all special in our own way and in the goal of building a happy island where all in stardom can feel happy and accomplished. And even by using less legal tactics from time to time, the Tokyo Cyber Squad would maintain their popularity by wearing colorful clothing and having a cheerful attitude. Their rise starts at May 16th when she defeats the trio of stars to capture the group's first title as a team. And this momentum would extend throughout September when she finally wins the 2019's 5 star Grand Prix by defeating her teammate Konami in the finals. Three weeks later, Hana has another shot for the World of Stardom Championship against Bia Priestley in another match that would be considered one of her finest and definitely worthy of going out of your own way to watch it. It's actually free right now on Stardom's YouTube channel. 
With the sale to Bushy Road, it was obvious that Hannah was one of the chosen ones to move the company forward. This, tied with the fact that she was part of a popular reality show, the cards were settled for January 4th at the Tokyo Dome. First night of Wrestle Kingdom in front of 40,000 fans. Hannah has the biggest match of her life. Being forced to team up with Julia, they face Mayu Iwatani and Ariza Oshiki. The match would end up with a moonsault from Iwatani over Hana, and this helped cement the ongoing feud between them, which was one of Bushiroad's plans to grow the popularity of stardom and to put Hana on top of it. Sadly, due to the COVID-19 virus, the wrestling scene in Japan drastically changed in February, and that ended up putting on hold all the major storylines. At March 24th in Karakonol, during this year's edition of the Cinderella Tournament, Hana Kimura ties with Mayu Iwatani, ending with both of them being knocked off the tournament. This would be her last match. When something like this happens, it's really hard to predict how far would someone get in wrestling. But in the case of Hana Kimura, I think it's easy to assume she would be one of the biggest stars in Japan in the near future, and would probably hold one of the main belts in stardom at least. And let's be honest, she wasn't the most technical gifted wrestler or the most spectacular to watch, but she was easily one of the most charismatic and a pure raw diamond that will only get better in the future. And sadly, that future was taken away from her way too soon. And with this comes the question, what can we do as people facing a situation like this one? Well, we can actually start being nicer to each other. It's easy to sit on your chair, get behind your computer and be mean to another person without thinking that that's a human being sitting on the other side. Someone you have no idea of their emotional state, what they've been through, the struggles of their day-to-day -day life and how that impacts their psychological state. Because depression is something really hard to deal with. It's like you're swimming in this bottomless pit and the more you swim, the fastest you sink. And it's very easy to feel lost and beyond help. That's why we need to be better to one another to be less tolerant when it comes to cyberbullying and that's why we need to try to just understand each other's points of views even if they are so different from our very own. 2020 is being a weird year with the COVID-19, the social political situation facing issues like racism and government's negligence. I think now more than ever we need to take a step back and think of what connects us as a society. But what about as a wrestling fan, what can we do facing a situation like this one? Well, Hannah may not be among us anymore, but her work definitely is, so we can go back and just watch the matches that she left us with. And yes, this may be hard and emotional, but you know what, as fans we, we kinda owe it to her. That's why most of the matches that you saw in this video, their links are in the description below, so you can actually watch them in full for free, completely for free. Um, I would also recommend you to subscribe to The Stardom World, because it's a really cool service, and if you really want to go through Hannah's career, since most of it actually happened there, I would, again, strongly recommend it, because it's by far one of the most exciting Joshi promotions in the world right now and I would definitely start there if you want to go into Joshi but maybe you don't know how to uh, Stardom World is a really really nice service 
Just want to thank you guys for staying with me in this video. If you like the video, press like and subscribe to the channel if you want. Um, also, leave your favorite Hannah matches and moments uh, in the comment section below. Hopefully, you can leave this video with a better understanding of who Hannah was and the positivity that also surrounded her life. And right now, you can also focus on the good moments instead of the obviously bad one. Hope you guys enjoy it once again. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys next time.